Welcome to our homestead today. We are continuing our series on our solar system. And yep, that's right, we're doing some grounding. In addition to the grounding, we are going to be hooking up the communications for the batteries and we are also going to be paralleling both of our inverters together and talking about some of the programming involved in that. So let's get started by driving our exterior ground rod into the ground. Now, of course, I may have to make this silly claim in every video. I'm not an electrician, nor am I an engineer. This is what I've been told to do by the solar company, my friend's an electrician, and I've read some of the NEC. So what we are connecting to our grounding rod is our batteries and our inverters on the DC side. All the grounding on the AC side goes from the, our sub panel all the way back to our main and out to a grounding rod on our house. So this grounding rod needs to go eight feet in the ground or pretty much flush with the ground. And I got it in pretty far by just pushing it in. Now I'm gonna take my post driver, take it the rest of the way. So I took those two ground wires that I had connected to the sub panel here and I rerouted them outside to their own earth ground. And talking to several electricians, this is the right thing to do because this generates power and the grid generates power. That's connected to its own ground rod over there at the main panel. Everything here is grounded back over at the main panel, but this is a second power generation uh, item, I guess you could say, or station, and you don't want that connected back there. So we've got that extra ground rod outside. So for our batteries, we don't have them grounded yet. They do come with a grounding screw on the exterior of each battery, and that whole metal case is connected to this whole metal rack. So in theory, I could connect the rack outside to the ground, and that would ground every battery because they're all grounded together. Everything's metal, everything's touching. And I just haven't done that yet because I'm reading so much about whether to ground batteries or not ground batteries. It's just kind of up in the air for me right now. If you have an idea, let me know. And remember this startup right here. I know the grow watt manual is incorrect in regard to this. You have to have your batteries connected to start up these inverters. So make sure you do that. These five, uh, five KW inverters, make sure your batteries are connected first. And always go in this order, battery panels inverter for on and off in the reverse order. So let's talk about our battery communication first. Each battery is talking to each other through these communication ports right here through these little jumpers. Remember, your top battery or whichever battery you set it at, but normally your top battery, the dip switches on the outside here are set to down, 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 up. And that is so this battery can talk properly to the inverters. Each other battery on here can be set to whatever combination on the dip switch you want, as long as they don't match each other and as long as they don't uh, match this top one, of course. And as you can see, we've got this ethernet cable here. Now we had this on hand at home. This does not come in any of the battery kits or with the inverter. So you're gonna need to pick up an extra ethernet cable. That is going to be connected to the RS-485 port on the top battery only. Then in the recent past, before they reprogrammed these, I was told the other day when I talked to Signature Solar, you had to have a hub and that RS-485 had to connect into the hub and each hub line had to go to each inverter. I talked to them and they said it only needs to go into the master inverter now because every other communication is done between the inverters to the batteries through all the other communication cables. Now make sure on this ethernet cable coming from the RS-485 on the top battery connects to your master inverter in the RS-485 port. Wait a second, there is a glitch in what I just told you. And that is, I have the brand new GrowWatt SPF 5000 inverters. And on these inverters, you actually do connect your ethernet cable from your first battery to the BMS port on the bottom of the inverter. With the older inverters, maybe five, six months ago, that wasn't the case. It did go from RS-485 to RS-485. But GrowWatt recently just flipped that. 
So, brand new inverter, BMS port, plug it in there. Older inverter, RS-485 to RS-485. Now something happened I'll have to get some clarification for you on is the order in which I turned on and off the inverters reset the master and the slave. So if you want everything to work off of this one for your master, that one has to be turned on first and then off last. I'll figure out how to get that setting to stick for us. But right now, let's do the battery communications. This one is set at master, so we're gonna do it through this one. So I am gonna go into function five and I'm gonna change this from user setting two, which is what I had it set before because I didn't have my communication cable set up. User setting two is used for lithium batteries when you don't have that communication set up. But now we can go in there and change it to lithium and they'll start talking to one another. So we're gonna hold down enter. We're gonna cycle down to setting five. Enter to get into it. You see it said US2 to start. And we're gonna scroll down to LI. We're gonna enter and it's gonna give me LOO right in the center, L00 I believe actually, and protocol 36. 36 is correct for the 5K inverters. The other inverters have different numbers on this side. So I need to scroll over to here by hitting enter, and then it, we're gonna set it at L01. So this is covered clearly in the manual. These communication uh, cables here, the old school style is pretty funny, um, that goes outside to outside. So on this inverter, it's the one on the left. This one, uh, it's the one on the right. And then inside to inside for the other cable. On these additional communication wires, they go same to same. So left on this side, right here, to left on this side. And then right on this side to right on this side. So I'm paralleling these without my PV connected. And that's because my DC disconnect switch uh, was not working properly. So I'm still waiting for that to come back in, but I believe I can still do this. I've got my breakers on my sub panel all on. So they are connected internally in that sub panel, but I have my safety switch off. So there's no power going to the house right now. So there are several functions with these GrowWatt 5K inverters that you need to do in standby mode. And you do that by turning the inverter on, letting it boot up, and then turning it off again. It'll stay in standby mode when it's connected to the battery for probably about 30 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. And you need to do and work within that uh, 20 seconds. You need to start working on the functions. Once you work on the functions, in standby mode, it'll stay on while you're doing something. If you stop for 20 seconds, it'll turn off. So we're gonna work on function 23, and that needs to be in standby. And what we're gonna do is set them for PAL, which is paralleling, and that's for two inverters. Three phase with three inverters requires a different setting, but we've got two, so we're gonna do this one right here. So this first inverter over here is the one I want set at master. So that's set at the master. And then this one over here is slave number one. Now we're gonna flip both of these off and they'll stay in standby mode for that period of time I told you. And we're gonna go to function 23 and set it to PAL. We're gonna hold down enter until we get into the menus. We're gonna scroll down to 23. We're gonna enter in and change these to PAL. Once you enter in there, you can just escape out of them and escape again, and you're back at the main screens. Now we can turn each unit back on. Okay, we're gonna look at some of the other settings that you need to set up for these inverters. Everybody's gonna have a little bit different settings depending on what you wanna do, and for us, we are taking a lot of the recommendations from Signature Solar and program, programming them into these. And that's because we're completely off-grid and we have a very simple system. So we're gonna get in here to option one. This is our output source priority. And the SBU here stands for Solar Battery Utility. So it, the house use, the loads use the power in this order. 
So if there's sun out, it's pulling directly from the panels. And if there's not a lot of sun, it pulls from the batteries. And then if, they're, if the batteries are low and there's no sun, it'll pull from the utility. But for us, we don't have AC in. It's not hooked up because we're completely off grid. So that U really doesn't exist for us. So this you'll want to change because the default is set at utility. Let's move on. So we have lithium batteries. This option two is for lead acid batteries only. So we're going to skip over that. So option number three is the quality of the voltage that's coming in. Obviously generators have some dirty power. It's very clean power that you're getting from the grid. But for us, we're going to actually go in here and we're going to scroll down to UPS. That is a recommended setting for anybody off grid from uh, Signature Solar. Obviously, we don't have a generator and the other one is the default. So we're going to leave it here. So we're going to go back here. We're going to scroll down. This is disconnected setting four. That's recommended that it stay disconnected. Setting five is our batteries. We just did this and set them to lithium. And you can only do that when you have the battery communication cable hooked up and the communication working properly. If not, you have to set it at user two. Six and seven, we are gonna leave on the defaults. And that is just temperature settings for overloads and uh, auto restarting. If we have any issues with uh, overloads or anything with these inverters, I don't want them to auto start or auto restart or keep auto restarting. I want to figure out what the problem is before I damage the inverter. So no auto restarts for us. So setting eight for the United States, we need to set it at 240 volt. We're going to scroll to nine and 60 Hertz. And because we don't have appliances or anything in our house that works off 50 Hertz. So set that to 240 and 60. Setting 10 is only for lead acid batteries. We don't have those, we're gonna skip over it. Setting 11 is only for lead acid also, skip over that. So setting number 12 is where the batteries discharge to, what percentage? Obviously lithium batteries you can discharge down to 0%, but that is gonna kill the life of your battery faster. So it's recommended that you go down to 20%. But for us, we live in a decently sunny area. We're gonna actually go to 30%. So our batteries will not discharge below 30%. Now in setting 13, we are going to set where we want our batteries to be able to power the house again once they're up to the proper uh, percentage. 95 is pretty high. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna change that to 75. So we can start utilizing the batteries once again at 75%. Setting 14 is important. It's going to tell you where you want, you're going to charge your batteries from. So what we are going to set ours at is OSO or only solar. There is an option here to charge from the grid if you have AC in, but you do not want to do that. You don't want to charge your batteries from the grid through these inverters. Uh, that is not a good thing to do at all for the health of your entire system. So here's where you can reset all those alarms that or those beeps you keep hearing. I'm going to leave them on for now, but they're starting to get a little annoying. So you can change that if you want. This is the backlighting control for these little LCD screens. Uh, I have mine on. It you can do it however you want it. This is another alarm when uh, your PV, your primary source is interrupted. I'll leave it on. For us, we don't have any grid AC in, so we're going to bypass uh, step 18 here, but if you do, you're going to need to uh, figure this one out. And then 19 and 20 are also related to input. So I don't 100% understand this. You can look at James's video from Signature Solar. If you have questions on anything that I'm doing here, he's got a great video going through all of these, but this relates to setting 12. 21 and 12 work together. So I'm going to enter in here and enter over, and I'm going to set that at 20% which is less than the 30. Setting 21 needs to be less percentage than setting 12. This is the low DC cutoff voltage, so we're gonna set that at 20. Like I said, better explanation from James over at Signature Solar. 28's not used, 29 through 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, and 42 are all day and hour uh, settings in this area, so you can play with that and reset everything as you need. 43 through 48 are for lead acid batteries also. I don't need any of that. 49 and 50 are uh, utility charging times, so you can 
set timing for using utilities as opposed to your solar system. Uh, since I'm off grid, obviously that doesn't matter. And we're through them. That is all the settings. So we're gonna exit out of that. So that was a lot to cover in one video. So are we ready to flip over our safety switch and power the house? Not yet. And here's why. I don't have my DC or PV disconnect switch installed right now and my PV lines are not going into my inverters. So it's recommended that you do not power directly and only from the batteries without having the PV connected. Now, some of you may say, well, it's no problem. Well, I am following the instructions that I was given by Signature Solar. So stay tuned for the video where we flip that switch and start powering our house. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this full system to the test and try to max it out and see what we can do with it. Now, I want you to go check this video out right here, which tells you exactly how much we spent on our entire system. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.